Before we get into the actual film in this video, I want to talk a little bit about the short film that played before it. A lot of you guys know that with Pixar films, they like to attach a short film beforehand, unless it's Toy Story 4, in which case they didn't. And they did that again with this film, and the short film that was attached to it was, well, this. I know, I'm just as surprised as you are. A Simpsons short film was attached to the latest Pixar film. Figure that one out. I mean, I get it, it's because Fox is owned by Disney now, but still, it doesn't make it any less surprising. The short film, though, is called Playdate with Destiny. It stars Maggie, of course, basically falling in love with another baby about as much as a one-year-old can fall in love. And while it might seem kind of bizarre that a Simpsons short is placed before a Pixar film, I've got to say it's a pretty amazing short film. Even as a short film without dialogue, it's hilarious. There's an emotional twist. I think the animation is obviously fantastic. Definitely show up to the theater a bit early to check it out. Even if you're not a Simpsons fan, you'll probably enjoy it. Now, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Welcome back to another unscripted film review. And as you can tell by the title, it is indeed a review of the latest Disney and Pixar film Onward. This is the 22nd full-length feature film from Pixar, the venerable animation studio that has been around since 1986 and has been one of the best in the animation game. It's also the second directorial film from Mr. Dan Scanlon, who previously directed 2013's Monsters University. And we're Worth pointing out, it is the first Pixar film that has no involvement whatsoever from John Lasseter, the former chief creative officer at Pixar. We all know John was a huge head at Pixar, but in 2017 he admitted to several acts of sexual misconduct and was ousted from the company in 2018, though he still received an executive producer credit on Incredibles 2, as well as a story credit on Toy Story 4. This, though, is the first Pixar film that has no involvement from John Lasseter whatsoever. Combining that with the fact that Pixar has mentioned that they're not going to be doing any sequels in the near future, and they're going to be focusing on original films, you can kind of see Onward in some ways as the beginning of a new era for Pixar. One where they are without a number of big players that have been with them for a long time. Obviously, John Lasseter was ousted, but also big names like Edwin Catmull and Lee Uncrich announced their retirements. So again, it's kind of just a new era for the company. And so far, I have been seeing some early reviews say that this film doesn't really stand as tall as some of Pixar's best, which of course is fine. I mean, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. But to me, I think that that's less of a knock on the film's quality, and it's more so a testament to Pixar's legacy and impact on animation that a film like this could be seen as not as great as some of their classics. Really, to me, I think Onward is another fantastic example of why Pixar is one of the best in the game, and it's another example of their knack for proving how beautiful and how emotional and impactful animation can be. I know this is going to be an early hot take, but I would honestly say to me, Onward might rank up there with a lot of Pixar's classics like Toy Story 2 and Up and Inside Out and Coco. That's how good of a film it is. For a basic rundown of the story, Onward is set in kind of a suburban fantasy world that used to be inhabited with magic, but then as technology started to advance, magic just kind of went away. Bit of interesting social commentary on the over-reliance of technology that we humans have today. And the film centers around two elf brothers, Ian and Barley, played by Tom Holland and Chris Pratt, who pretty much learn a spell that will allow them to bring their deceased father back from the dead for 24 hours. Unfortunately, said spell only brings back the bottom half of their dad's body, which is kind of hilarious. And with 24 hours remaining, they have have to travel to find a gem that will allow them to reattempt the spell and bring back their father to see him one last time before he returns to the land of the dead, for lack of a better way to put it. As Pixar's first attempt really at a mythical setting, I think they do a really fantastic job. I think the story is pretty twisty and of course it is very emotional. It's a Pixar film, you should expect nothing less. Obviously it tackles a pretty heavy theme in bringing back one's father from the dead, which I mean, Pixar has been no stranger to tackling themes of death with like Up and Coco, but they do it very well here and they use the mythical, magical setting of the film to their advantage with it. The film is also pretty hilarious. I think the dialogue is great. Tom Holland and Chris Pratt, of course, are great in their respective roles in the film. I think they bring these characters to life and I think they were perfect choices for Ian and Barley. I also think a number of these side characters are very interesting too. 
I especially loved Laurel, the boy's mother, who's played by Julia Louis Dreyfus, as well as Corey the Manticore, played by Octavia Spencer. I think they are hilarious. They really add to the film in a great way. The way that they come together with Ian and Barley's plot is pretty amazing too. It's a Pixar film, so of course the animation is top notch. It's beautiful. Even after so many decades, Pixar has not lost their touch from a visual standpoint. This film absolutely looks magnificent. And even though I wouldn't call it an action-y film, there are quite a few action scenes that I think are really well crafted and well done. I won't say what it is for spoilers, but there is a particular fight scene in the film that I just think is fantastic and it left me on the edge of my seat the whole time. And in general, the film just left me on the edge of my seat the whole time. This was just really fantastic. Pixar does what they do best with this film. Craft something that is hilarious, features a great story, fantastic characters, amazing animation, and plenty of heart. We all know that Pixar has been innovative in a number of ways for their use of CGI back with films like Toy Story, but the company has always emphasized that story and characters are the most important thing in the film, and this is another example of that. For as beautiful as it is and for as different of a setting as it is compared to their other films by handling mythical, magical topics, Pixar never loses sight of the heart, the humor lands consistently, and the characters that they crafted are sympathetic. You want to cheer for them. They are rich. I really can't complain about this film. I think it is wonderful. It is yet another Pixar classic. And again, I would go as far as to say that it stands up there with some of Pixar's best. If you want a great example of just how amazing animation can be, how impactful it can be, how beautiful and poignant it can be when it handles mature themes, this is a perfect example of that. On my rating scale, it should be obvious, but Onward is going to get an excellent rating from me. I kind of wish I could go higher, but I want to stick with the rating scale that I'm currently using. But yeah, Onward is fantastic. Pixar did an amazing job with it once again. Go check this out. I'm sure you will have a great time. But that is just my opinion on the film. What did you guys think of it? Are you with me? Do you think this lines up with some of Pixar's best? Did it leave you a bit more disappointed than some of the other Pixar films? Where would you rank it? And what would you say is your personal favorite Pixar film? For me, it's down to either Toy Story 2 or Inside Out, but let me know what you guys think. Give me your thoughts down in the comments. Let's keep this civil and have some fun as we like to do. If you guys want to hit like and subscribe, thank you. If not, it's no big deal. I totally understand. For what's next in terms of film reviews, I'm not totally sure. Again, I don't see a ton of films in a year, so I don't know what's coming next that I really want to see. There are some options in the next few months, but I'm just not 100% sure. Maybe it could be Mulan. Maybe it could be New Mutants. Maybe it could be Black Widow. I'm not 100% sure. I will nevertheless have plenty of album-related videos coming soon, so stay tuned for those. But until then, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.